Let's run up a million. If you're trying to kiss ass, better get a room. What's up guys, it is Friday, January 28th and it's 6.03 a.m. and this is the Daily Milk and this is about to be that muscle milk because I'm about to show you a seven year long trend line from 2015. No one is talking about it. I haven't seen one thing on any social media, anybody talking about it recently at least and I'm about to bring it back because this is something you wanna pay attention to. So see this white trend line, this ascending trend line right here? Um, it started back at the bear market bottom in 2015. And you can see that every single time, like during this accumulation phase of the bear market bottom 2015, we kind of grinded up on it this whole time. We're talking two week candles. And look at all that, those candles right here, just grinding right on it. Two week candles, you're talking about a span of three months right there, just holding that trend line. And then right here, we came back, we had like a pop up, we went away from the trend line, back down to it, we reverted to it. And then we had like another three months on that trend line, holding it to a T. And then we had another pop up, and then we fell back down and guess where we held it? Right there, but it was less of holding it for a long time here because we entered into a parabolic phase of the market where you could, oh shit, hold on. Hi. Hello. Hello. Which one did you, which one did you order it to? Um, I, the, 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 um, the one that you know. Then we had that pop up and you can see the trend line. We were ascending kind of at like a, kind of, you know, a equal kind of pace, it's going slowly up, grinding our way. And then all of a sudden we broke out from that upwards resistance trend line and we broke out, came back down, retested it, and then we just went. But you can see that this whole time, we're talking 2015 in January, all the way until April 2017. So we're talking about a span of two years and four months during this whole time period back then that we held that trend line. And then we came back in 2019 uh, in January, and look where we touched on it. And then we held on that trend line for this was about two to three months. Two to three months just grinding up on that trend line. Kind of looks familiar to back here, right? Just this pop up and kind of reversion from this mean line was much bigger and ex expansive than these ones. But like I always say, these cycles and these patterns are just the same thing. Sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, but these fractals play out the same way. And then you saw we grinded here and then we had that same pop up and then we reverted back to the mean and guess where we came to? Right on that median line, right on the median line. And guess what month it was in? January, January. And then we popped up and then this was the COVID crash. I believe this was a deviance away from the trend. So we broke this and then we came right back up to it with kind of like a V bottom, grinded our way as resistance now because old support now comes new resistance. And we grinded on it like resistance and then right when we got above it, immediately shot, we shot, did that another, we did that other like bump up and we didn't come back down to the trend line though. Maybe at this point we should have, but we didn't, we got supported right there and then we popped back up, made a new all time high slightly, came back down and, and where did we find support in January? Right on that seven year long, right on that seven year long trend line from 2015 and even crazier. There's two other things I noticed, and this is just the Bitcoin chart, US dollar, Coinbase, two weeks per candle. So there's a couple of key similarities with kind of where we're at just with Bitcoin in general, but we know that Bitcoin kind of moves the rest of the market. So, and I was comparing this to a COVID kind of moment and calling it, I feel like a week or two weeks ahead about those hash ribbons to check out those hash ribbons again and see where we're at with that. But when I was saying that, I said the last time that happened was COVID crash and we got a COVID crash type of scenario playing out or did already play out. It looks like it because we can see here that the similarities of from this top to this candle body close. And if I do it on the regular candles, you can see that from this top, the swing high to this candle body close is around like 51% down. We're down 51%. And then we go to this similar kind of scenario that we're in right now. And time frames lining up as well too. the January kind of we can see that from this swing high to this candle body close right now is 48%. It's around 48%. So we're kind of at that same area where, hey, this is exactly what happened before. Granted, I didn't pull it all the way down to the wick. The wick was 60%, but we ended up closing that two week candle um, back only down 50%. It seems like this COVID crash was much more of a severe move. It was quick, right to the downside in, three, in about four weeks. And it actually only happened in about two weeks. This candle right here was like 50% down, 60% down. This one was more dragged out. So it was like, it was coming, but it slowly made its way there. The, the COVID crash was like ripping off the Band-Aid. This, what we just experienced was more of like a slow, painful process of really just watching it grind itself down with lower lows, lower highs. But there is some foresight coming in from this trend line 
and the how much far we've already fell compared to the past and compared to kind of where we're at with the trend because you can see back to here the last time we had uh, the hash ribbons I'll, I'll throw them on now I'm sorry it's actually the NVT HV indicator so the NVT HV indicator every time we get close to this yellow line and it's um, goes from red to white we have a sell-off and we have a pretty substantial sell-off uh, most of the time it could be anywhere from 50 percent and I believe I might have said that in that past video basically every single time that we go from red to white we have a 50 percent drop and that's what we saw already so that kind of signals that hey maybe the worst of it's already over and we're seeing signs that we're starting to turn around we see that we're in fear you can see the last times we're in fear all over here and we can see that we have similar kind of structures as well too so you can see that we have this trend we have that long-term trend line we have this kind of triangle down with the resistance on top support on the bottom similar to right here resistance on top support on the bottom and then what's even more crazy is if we dive into the the macd let's go into the macd and i'm going to show you that even even where we're comparing this um how we're comparing this to the COVID crash, I'll show you the MACD and the MACD tells a little story. So let's go into it. So the MACD right here, we can compare it to, we're comparing it to this, this crash right here. So you can see that when we had our pop up like this, and then we went back down, and then we had that failed rally to the capitulation. And you could see the MACD, we had our cross up once, our cross down once, we tried to cross here, didn't get close to it, um, because, and I'll, I'll get to that in a sec, but let me actually zoom in so you can see. So we're about to cross, and we might have slightly did, or no, we didn't because the histogram didn't, but we're looking like we're going to, and even if we had one subtle little pop up here, we would have crossed, and then we would have crossed right back down for a lower low. So let's run through that again with that kind of pattern. We had the cross up once, cross down once, cross up twice, but it was a fake out, and then cross down twice, and that was the true bottom true bottom where we had a high come in, a low come in, a lower high come in, then we had our lower low and that was the bottom and then we repeated the cycle all over again because we can look here. So we said that, all right, that lower low point where it marked the bottom, March COVID. And then we see the cross up, so cross up one, and then we came up, cross down one, and then we see cross up to fake out, cross down to bottom, bottom. Similar to the March COVID crash, it looks so similar in all aspects, market structure. Um, this this could still go though. It could go maybe to 28K. I'm not saying it can't, but a lot of signs are telling us right now that, hey, this thing starts to curl back around. It's go time. It is go time. So we know what to look out for. Everything's lining up to say, hey, this could be a longer term, broader picture bottom. And even this got me pumped up because I want to scoop up so much coin right now. It's not funny after seeing this and a couple other things that I'm going to show you because when I show you the Bitcoin dominance chart and I show you the new strategies that I just came up with as far as like analyzing these different coins it's game changer and it just makes you want to just scoop up more coin especially with the news and the developments that's happening with the fundamentals the technicals as far as right now it sucks everything's down but these are the moments I get fired up because when there's blood in the streets you buy it even if it's your own so let's keep moving forward because Bitcoin dominance I have the two-day candle chart on so I figured out nice, clean, simple way to know when to convert in and out of Bitcoin, which are all coins. So right here, we see that when the TSI is above the zero line, which is depicted here with that horizontal white line right there, um, when it's above the zero line, dominance is bullish and its gains are with Bitcoin. So this is Bitcoin dominance chart. When we're going up and we're above the zero line, it's bullish. Dominance is strong. If we're below the zero line, then dominance is bearish and the gains are with all coins. And that's the time to maybe swap your Bitcoin to all coins. So keep that in mind as we go through this, because you could follow it just like this. Every time you have a cross up, it just equals swap into Bitcoin from your alts. That's it. Then every time you have a cross down, swap into alts from your Bitcoin. That is it. But you've got to be on the two-day chart. You don't want to be doing this on the 10-minute chart. You're going to be swapping in and out of altcoins, Bitcoins all day. Just churn through all your money through fees. Um, so you don't want to be doing that two-day chart. Bigger picture strategy. It's so clean that it, it really just takes setting an alert like this. Go to an alert. And then you can do condition. You could pick TSI. And then you could do crossing right here crossing and then just do create and then you're good 
and now you'll get notified and I actually set it up for the discord so I added Bitcoin dominance two-day TSI cross in the discord for Bitcoin signals so that's gonna be game changer because now we're gonna be able to take advantage of swapping in and out of Bitcoin with alts and really start accumulating more Bitcoin or maybe start to get a Bitcoin stack by doing that as well as accumulate more altcoins because the big boom is coming the big boom is coming 2022 is gonna be crazy and 2023 2024 we can't even imagine everything that's going to go on we can't we can't because it's not even been fully developed yet it's not even fully regulated yet but those regulations are coming central bank digital currencies are coming and we're so lucky because we're so on top of it and ahead of the game and not many people are realizing this big shift that's about to happen and we're about to get it and we're on top of it so let's go so bitcoin dominance today tsi right here uh you can see that cross down swap into alt so see this moment right here compared to right there so on that two day cross down you swap their Bitcoin into alts, you made a killing, you made a killing. Then say right here on that cross up, you swap their alts back into Bitcoin, you know, you did pretty well, went up from there, but it's just been ping pong in the ping ponging in this area. So regardless, it's not like you're losing either way, you're making equal and even gains. But remember, we're we're selling and buying or we're swapping every time there's a cross. So you could play this to a T because you just swapped into alts from up here and then you just swap back into Bitcoin here and then you swap back into alts here, swap back into Bitcoin here. Um, you didn't do it yet. Swap back into alts here, back into Bitcoin. So you're, like you're nailing it because so, you got it here. You got it here. That was the only time that you might have bought and then sold rather quickly without any profit. And then it, you sold right here and then it, you made a kill in there and then you killed it there, killed it there. And then even here, it's to a T. It's been to a T since what? May of 2021. Actually, no, January 2021. It's been to a T even um, before that in 2020. So we got a new strategy now. We're gonna kill it as far as swapping from Bitcoin to altcoin. Um, I just found this tonight, so I'm fired up about it. So we know when this starts to cross over, we can switch back into alts or you don't wanna kinda, it's already crossed up and we're like halfway through. It's not, I wouldn't say now's the time, oh, go all alts into Bitcoin. I'd say play it safe right now. We know which levels that if it breaks above, then yeah, it's full blown Bitcoin season or if it gets rejected, we know it's full coin we know it's full-blown altcoin season so don't rush into anything be patient um, you want to have a clear mind when you're making decisions like that and then we can dive into others which is altcoin dominance i feel as if altcoin dominance is going to take off i really feel as bitcoin dominance is um going to have one more pull down it's going to come down one more time maybe it just comes down to retest this low right here or maybe even just right here either way that's still all coins would go off. It would go off because even in this moment right here, they're going off this moment and that's just another moment right there. So we can see that. Oh, also too, another thing I forgot to mention about the dominance when we're bullish and when we're uh, below is that you can start to gauge whether you should be buying the Bitcoin dips or not or swapping um, into Bitcoin when there is like a dip and there's a cross up. Because right here you could have um, you could have got in on the dip but it's kind of risky. We just dropped off a cliff. Do you really want to be doing that at this level? You know that dominance is bearish and the gains are more with alts. So maybe you refrain from buying these cross ups and then, um, cause that would have been great. Cause right here, bam, it went even lower. So you could play it like that or you could just use it as a signal whether we're starting to change momentum by how like closer we get, see? lower uh, i mean higher lows right there and we're getting closer to that median line where we're trying to flip market structure uh for bitcoin dominance from bearish to bullish and that's what exactly what we did so we had the higher lows and we had this e we had the median line and then we had this area where we ping pong and back and forth and then we ended up breaking above decisively and that signaled yeah bitcoin dominance flipped bear uh flipped bullish and we went on like two years where bitcoin dot being in Bitcoin was the better move. So following this to a T is the key. And then I think we're right up on that median line right now, or we're getting close to it. Yeah, we're right up on it right now. You know what I wanna look at real quick is the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands, okay. So we need to keep an eye out for that because if those open like that and the mouth opens like that, that means a strong move. So we wanna make sure if it's headed to the upside, both of them aren't, um, widening we also have resistance of the 200 ma coming down as well so keep your eyes there and then others dominance we have so we have this heavy resistance this fibonacci moving average the blue one so every single time right here it's like served as a rejection point or once we get above it we just have like a sharp like crocodile tooth sometimes they call it so it goes up right away and then right back down like a like a v so right when we got above it we touched the orange fibonacci moving average shark tooth back down and then we got rejected by it multiple times same scenario right here so we came up right here we broke above 
got rejected by the orange, back down shark tooth, and then we got rejected, and then we did it all over again. And then right here, we um, did it there, and then it was actually the orange Fibonacci moving average this time, that was that level that we need to get above, and immediately right to the next one. So as soon as we break above or below one, we can e easily, s safe to say, target the next Fibonacci moving average, because it seems like it reacts to uh, this indicator very well. And then we broke below, rejected, rejected, it was acting as support, and then as soon as we broke it, we went into a bear market for altcoins for years. We're talking like three years. And then we finally, back January 2021, popped on out of there, out of nowhere, came right back up to where? That same Fibonacci moving average that acted as support in the bull market, now acting as resistance. I'm telling you, we break above that, we're going right to the orange Fibonacci moving average. We're going right to it because I showed you this time, this time, this time, and this time. Every single time we break a key resistance on the Fibonacci moving average on the, the other's dominance, altcoin dominance, it's a rocket ship right up. It's quick. I'm telling you, these pump or the big pump is going to be quick. It's going to be a matter of three to four weeks, and it's going to be filled with a lot of heightened emotions and good feelings. But we got to be vigilant about it because, as you can see, a couple weeks, that's all it is. So then we see here that there is also, I showed you in the TSI for the Bitcoin dominance, the MACD for the altcoin dominance is looking interesting as well too. Okay, so here's what I was talking about with the altcoin dominance and that similar pattern playing out with the MACD and kind of with the chart as well. Let me see if I can get rid of these lines right here. So we see how there's an arrow here, which signals this macro top. And then for years, we kind of went down and then we had that same similar pattern. So we had this initial top right here. This was the initial top. And then we came down with the MACD like this, right? And then we had this trend line coming down. And then we pop above the trend line, we have a big push up, just like here. So we had our bottom, and then, and that was in what? January 2016. Doesn't that kind of look like January 2021? That looks a lot like January 2021. And then we pop up right here, and then we have a bigger pop up, and we get above that trend line, and then we come back down, we go below it, just like right here. Because we said that in January 2016 was the equivalent to January of 2021. And you can see that here we had our bottom, just like here we had our bottom. We got above the trend line around August 2016, and then we came back down around January 2017, and then let's show you now up to date. So this was the bottom January 2021. We came up over the trend line around May, June of 2021, and then we popped back down below the trend line just like back here, and in June, uh, then we got back above it um, around like November 2021, and we've been above it ever since. So we've been grinding our way up, kind of like back here, we were grinding our way up, even though being down in these areas, and then, so we're back up to this previous high we had here, like we had right here in the MACD. And in the pre in the uh, dominance, we're at the same level. And in the MACD, we're at the same kind of level like right here. Then look at here, where we had that high and that similar high in the MACD. And then look at what we were battling right before we had a big push up. We were battling with that same level from back here in the MACD. So I believe that we're on the precipice of all coins having a quick sharp pump for a matter of like maybe three to four weeks they're gonna have they're gonna take a lot of dominance away from bitcoin and i i would expect that it would be on a bounce i would feel like the whole crypto market bounces hard off of maybe some news and the the all coins rally so much harder and go up so much higher than bitcoin because with everything so oversold right now uh all coins got hit harder than bitcoin so when they get hit harder in sell-offs on rebounds and it looks like a bigger picture macro bottom on rebounds they tend to go back up as fast just as fast as they went down we could be at that moment right now and it's lining up with february march uh potentially maybe even april it could stretch out to um and that lines up with all the timelines so let's dive into ethereum so i was staring at the ethereum chart and actually you know what i want to cut it off right now i'm going to save this for the next video i'm going to save this for the next video because this deserves a full one and then i'm gonna um share another video a bonus one the three-day bottom band pierce strategy i'm going to save these it's a lot so i want to make sure they're broken up so you guys can take everything in at once and go through it and then um yeah so that's it for the daily milk the muscle milk and i'll be doing the daily tea hey let's run up a minute living on main street i've been trying to get dough no pastry i've been living on golden hasty what is cold outside i get pasty white boy got flows like swaley like the best street boys had